Here it is. The Motu MK2828. Kind of happy that I got it. This thing is mint. Absolutely. I overpaid for it because it's a uh, new old stock. But there's that nice cast iron case that surrounds these things. Home protection unit. Let's get started with it, though. We have two preamps, uh, combo jacks. They lock. That's nice. We have trim control, 48 volt, four phantom power. Pretty decent. Like to have seen more, but hey, man, regular volume that pushes, you can adjust volume, main out. Then we have the three push enabled controls for the little LCD screen. It's so early 2000s. It's awesome. But we have QMix DSP on board Mix Matrix, 96K, ADAT, Word Sync, ADAT Sync, something else sync. Metering on the front. Very accurate. Uh, you have all of your inputs and outputs along with ADAT, microphone one, microphone two, and that's going to tell you what your clock is. Hey, power button. Nice. On the back, unlike the MK1 Traveler, the power supply is built into this unit. So, hey, go grab a PC cord out of your closet, plug it in. You got your word clocks if you need to sync it to an external device, uh, along with ADAT, in and out. There's that ADAT sync thing again. Spit of, in and out. Good to see. Firewire pass through SMPTE. One day I'm going to find out what that is. Hardware MIDI. You're not going to get that in a cheap interface these days. Punch button. Then what you would expect 24 bit 96 analog, 8 in, 8 out. Pretty cool. Pretty decent. I got something over here on the side. I'm kind of hiding. Hey, inserts. That's right. Uh, channel 1 and 2 with the preamps have inserts on the back. So if you need to plug in a piece of external gear like a compressor or who knows what you would want to plug in but you can and i like options and of course main out on the side hey depending on where you live you can flip the switch and make it happen okay let's take a look at this this is our power up sequence there's not much to it takes a minute though doing some of those self checks i would assume there's our qmix dsp Version 1.01, .01, which is the most recent from 2000, whatever. More of the same, really. We do have a clock source. You can do external, internal, 48 to 96. And that's just your word clock out. That's how quick the faders boop around. You have the options for your optical. You can do ADA, toss link. Those share the same point. Um, optical out, there's your bus mixes. You can do mutes. You can assign your headphones. Where do you want them to go? It's kind of neat. Continuing on, these are your current mix selections where you can copy and paste bus mixes around. I'm not sure exactly how that works, but these are all of your presets, which I think are as far as you want to go. I've went up to 15. I'm sure you can go much higher. So you have load, you have save, and just do a factory reset. Easy, easy. Let's move over to just our cue mixing, which is pretty decent. That's your cursor, as you might expect, and your mixer that's going to adjust volume on any of your analog inputs and digital inputs, you know, if your microphone or SPDIF or ADAT if you have that enabled. But we have options for panning if you want to do left and right. You can set solos. Yep, come on. There we go. Mute. And you have your plus fours. That's available on one through eight. One of these buttons, knobs, come on, knob, be a good knob. There we go. And a minus 10. Nice little pad, and you can do a plus six, you know, if you want to pump up the jam. That's all there. I love how this is just all in the front. If you want to make a stereo pair, it's that easy. That's all there is to it. Done. And yeah, all of this is on the front. So you don't even have to have the unit to plug in, uh, be plugged in to access any of this. And there's your phones. You can do the main out or phones by giving it a push. Yeah. Straightforward. I like it. And again, all of this is available through Fado Mixer with a nice little GUI. Let's get this critter set up. I'm using Cadence with the default settings because that's probably what you will experience at home. Out of the box, I have it set to 48 at 128 periods per buffer. I think that's 256 by default. I tend to just test everything at 128 to begin with. But I have modified the periods of buffer to three. I think that's two by default. 
Set to real time. Real time priority is 10. So we should be good to go. Yes, we are. We're looking at about five point, uh, yeah, five to six percent DSP load. Those seventeen X runs are due to Pulse Audio. We can blame everything on Pulse Audio. By default, it uh, Cadence will attempt to bridge Pulse Audio and Jack using the Pulse Audio Jack bridge, and it'll just connect the first two inputs with the first two outputs from the interface to a sync and source, respectively. You'd probably want to change that around to like microphone one and two or mic one into left and right for like a mono channel. And there's phones left and right out. Real quick, we need to take a look at Fado Mixer. Everything that is available on the front of the Moto 828 MK2 is available here. Along with phone assigns, your mix selections one through four. And in the subgroups for that, you have your options for your analog, your microphone inputs, SPDIF, and ADAT. From there, you can do your panning, solo, mutes, all the fun stuff available. And you can do your mix assign to your phones, analog, one, two, three, four, SPDIF, and ADAT as well. And you have master control volumes for your headphones, main out, and for analog input, you have the plus four dBU and the additional boost is available. This is a live recording session, um, simulated load on that. I do have audio coming into all of the channels. I have myself, Jordan, Pedro, and we have stereo pairs for game audio and a stereo pair for music, and giving us two, four, five, six, seven channels, plus all of the buses that are sending out. This is currently running out with a buffer size of 128 at 48K because this is what I use. We can see uh, the buffer size Filled up reasonably. DSP load about 12%. That's where I would expect it. No X runs. You're not going to see any issues with this. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward the video. I typically run this for 15 minutes just to get an idea if there's going to be a problem with communications, drivers, FATO issue, something like that. Didn't run into it with the Moto 828 MK2. But again, I didn't expect it to. That's why we've moved over to Firewire because it just works. Real quick, this is going to be more of the same. This is the amount of latency that you can expect uh, from a Motu A28 MK2 or really just about any FireWire device under Linux at 44.1, 48, and 96. Uh, from high end to low end at 512, you're seeing about 50.83 milliseconds. Low end at not 0.5, that's great. At 48, it's 46 high. Not 0.5 low, 96 at 512, 23 high at 16, not 0.2. That, that's normally what you're going to run into, and the best part about it, it's completely stable. I do have quite a bit of background noise because the preamps on the Motu A28 MK2 do roughly... 43 plus, yeah, plus 43 dB of gain. So you really got to push them. They're not terribly noisy at that level, but now this is a low output Golden Age D2. So this needs 53 to 56 dB of gain to get up to operating level. This is not really going to do it. Now, this is why you'll see like noisy recordings and stuff like people complaining about, oh, I have some background noise and I bought this Shure SM7B. What's the issue? It's because they have it plugged into something like a Focusrite, Sapphire, i2, whatever. Those only do 45 flat out. So unlike the Moto, if you can see this little blue one down here, this is the MK1 Traveler. Those, which shocked me, have four like so Stupid, clean, super quiet, 70 dB preamps. That's very uncommon. So if we're going to be using this microphone, you hear the background noise there. You can tell I, I don't have a gate on. There's nothing. I do have the compression enabled, but that's just to make it a little bit louder than it would otherwise be. So I've just brought that up digitally, which is something you'd probably do at home. So what I'm going to do is... Uh, to give it a fair test, I'm going to use the Clark Technic 
mic booster. CT1, this is the... <laughs> man, you've seen a cloud lifter. You've probably seen a fet head. These are all the same thing. They, they do not contain Scandinavian witchcraft. They are phantom-powered FET inline preamps. They'll give you about an extra 20 dB a game. So let's get that plugged up. I'll bring that up. Um, check one, two. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and... Yeah. So about 45% of the preamp using... I'm coming up about 45% in the trim. So the harder you push a preamp, the more noise it's going to introduce. Just That's how they work, man. Really, really wicked expensive good ones. Okay, let's roll that all the way back. Pretty much without exception, the preamps and an interface are not the best things ever, and it doesn't matter. And, I mean, like even Apogee and Antelope, stuff like that. Wicked expensive kit. They're not that great. That's why you have external preamps and stuff like that. But if you want to maybe get rid of some of that noise, this is a good way to do it. That little Clark thing, it's like 40 bucks, man. And again, it's the same thing as a fat head or a cloud lifter, which respectively sell for about 70 to $150. Buy that. Phantom powered. Make sure you have phantom power. But... That's given us, uh, that's absolutely a level I work with, and it's got metering on the front. I don't know. It's saying 24. Let's take a look. I'm going to change this meter to old school DB, and eh, that's about right. Okay. All right. Accurate metering on the front, then. This is something we've learned together as a group. I feel we've grown as people collectively. And let's get that back on output. All right, so that is the Golden Age D2. Now let's try it with the pod standard, the old classic Carteroid Condenser AT2020 from Audio-Technica. This requires phantom power because it has active search circuitry inside, which also means we don't need a lot of gain. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I'm sounding like with the... That's about at the same level. This is roughly where I would keep it at. This is the AT21. <laughs> AT21. They probably make an AT21. This is the old one. The AT2020. Carteroid condenser microphone. And I have nothing in my stack. Minus the compression. But... Yeah, we are definitely about half tilt. So we're about 50% on the trim, which isn't bad at all. That's roughly what, roughly what I would expect for that. So, hmm. Completely usable. And there we have it. That is the Motu 828MK2 from Mark of the Unicorn. All the way back from 2004. Real quick, pros and cons. What doesn't work? Nothing doesn't work. It's a Motu device. I hate saying that because they were such big poo-poo heads towards um, the Linux community trying to develop drivers back in the day. But everything's been nice and reverse engineered. It's a completely solid piece kit. Uh, I had to find one thing that I had a small problem with, and it's easy to work around, is two preamps and kind of on the low side, only coming in around 45 dB, 43 to 45 dB. So if you're going to be using something like a Shure SM7B or um, Heil PR40, PR30B, or um, Golden Age D2, low output, large diaphragm, dynamic mic, going to need, well, you're not, yeah, you're going to need to attack on, you know, a Clark or a Fethead or a cloud lifter, something like that, or better yet, Plug it into your preamp, then run that into your interface. That's always a winner. But that's my only complaint with this device. What works is everything. Um, I didn't know how cool they were until I got the Motu MK1 Traveler. So much to play with, and it's completely standalone. You know, if you wanted to, if I wanted to use that Motu or this Motu as a preamp or um, anything. You have all the information right on the front of the unit. 
it can be a little bit of a nightmare to get into it. But as with the MK1 uh, Fado Mixer, you can pull that right up onto your desktop, set everything you need very quickly, and it's going to save to the device. You never have to worry about it again until you want to change it. You can create multiple profiles. It's really neat. And it also has the added benefit of having those two insert jacks. So if you wanted to take advantage of um, outboard compression or any other effects that you wanted to throw in, uh, especially with if you're coming in with a quarter inch direct input, there you go. That's really neat. Happy about that. So what should you pay? Board interface from 2004. That's Fireware. People should be giving them away, but mm, at first look, you'd be a little terrified because uh, I'm seeing 199. I'm on an eBay 195, 354. These these are delusional prices. No way, no chance. Scroll down a little bit, then you get to something more reasonable. 40 bucks. I'd pay 40 bucks for one. There's one for 75. Absolutely. I wouldn't have a problem paying 75 for one. Um, this is in Britannia. 66, 64. That could be doable. Perfectly honest. Yeah, I'd pay 95 for one. And I'd still feel like I got an okay deal. Let's go over to Reverb. Where things can... Yeah. They, they didn't... Lockstep. If you do not pay... $199 for one of these. 105 I could live with that. I could live with myself. I wouldn't be happy about it. Full disclosure, I paid 150 for this one, but it was effectively new old stock in a box. 120 I could live with. Like I said, 105 is doable. Uh, Non-functioning. 199 again, this is somebody going, what are these? Uh, this one, I just know that, but most of you probably know that background if you bought from eBay or Reverb. So... 200 bucks out of the question, $150. I overspent on it. I would have liked to have paid 60, but anywhere from 60 to hundred dollars. If you were looking for something with two decent preamps, preamps are decent. They're reasonably quiet. Even when I was driving this mic with just the trim all the way out, it wasn't unmanageable, but less than ideal. Hardware MIDI. That's brilliant. Like I said, you get those insert jacks. It is FireWire, but it's FireWire under Linux. So if you have a desktop, there'll be a link in the description to a TI-based PCI Express by one card, not PCI. You put it in, you cut the box on, and you're done. I mean, this box has an the audio box naturally has it. And you get to pick and choose with all the um, fun old high-end equipment that used to float around for pennies on the dollar. Like this one. This is a good deal. Uh, it only goes up to 96k. I guess that might be a limiting limiting factor, but I do everything at 48k. I, I don't have a deep down desire to waste recording drive space. But maybe you do. Maybe you're looking for 192k. MK1, that does 192. That's the thing. ADAT works. That's not a problem. I've tested that. Spit of works. Um setting internal clock or it can be clocked off anything else um bnc word clock adat clock i clocked it off spitif over adat i mean light pipe that worked not a problem so yeah if you're looking for one i recommend it it's completely stable i have recorded uh, a four hour live session of letting schemecast weekly with this no hiccup i was doing 128 and uh, did Wednesday show, which was another hour and a half at uh, 64. No problem whatsoever. Um, yeah, I'm talking about buffer size, not sample rate, so I don't want to really get confused. That's it. Uh, I'm happy with it, 100%. So maybe you will be too. Again, don't overspend on one of these. Sorry, if you're a reseller, Dynafire, um, yeah. You're just driving up prices. No one's buying these things except for us. So have fun sitting on the inventory. But hey, big thanks to the people who make this show possible. That's you at home. I'm dead serious about that. That's how we pay the bills. This is just a side project that I'm doing because I want to let everyone know that you can get awesome hardware. Really cheap and uh, infinitely better than what you could get 
even if you paid $150. If you paid $150 today, you would have a little focus right YouTuber special, single channel, USB. Oh, I'm just getting sad thinking about it, man. But hey, these are all our patrons that make it possible. If you want to join them, I dare you. Go do it. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. We got cool rewards and stuff like that. We have some even slightly cooler than cool rewards. Also, you can hop in our Discord. That's a thing. Okay, I'm out. As always, get out there. Make something awesome.